Hi. This is the second half of part six of my sequence on stochastic processes. It's about the response of dynamic systems to noise. And in the development of the variance equation, it also provides some of the background to the analog Kalman filter. The first half introduced transfer function methods for finding the statistics describing noisy system behavior. This half is about the state space approach by way of the Wiener process. This special stochastic process gives a workaround to some of the mathematical difficulties involved with white noise. Wiener developed the process as a simple model of Brownian motion, the way particles of dust are batted about by multiple high bandwidth impacts from the molecules of a fluid. The model is conveniently defined to start from zero and to have a zero mean value as overall the dust tends to hang around. The result of many impacts causes the probability density of the displacements to be Gaussian by the central limit theorem, whereby many different random events of whatever flavor add up to a Gaussian result. Also, as the size or strength of the displacements only depends on the number of collisions, and as this only depends on the time between observations, their increments are stationary and independent. In two dimensions, the process is a continuous form of the classic statistics random walk, comprising at each time instant an independent and random number of steps, either forwards or back, driven here by Gaussian white noise. However, while the incremental displacements are stationary, as time goes on, the accumulation of these random steps, or hits for any one bit of dust, or sample of the process, will tend to cause it to diverge more and more from the starting point making the process as a whole time-varying and so non-stationary. Now as an accumulation of white or whitish Gaussian noise, it's reasonable to define the Wiener process as the integral of white noise, even though its infinite spikiness makes white noise impossible to integrate, and though the Wiener process is pretty much impossible to differentiate in return. In justification, though, as a Gaussian process, it's determined by its mean and variance. So starting with the mean, and assuming the integration of white noise definition, a zero mean white noise input integrates to give an output mean value, which is also zero. So that ties up OK. Notice, though, that individual sample plots don't look like this. We'd need to average across an overall ensemble of several samples rather than take a time average of one sample as we could for a stationary process, as this will tend to wander off. In fact, for any one particular sample, the best estimate of the mean, and the best guess for what comes next, is the last known value. To find the variance, we can start with the expectation of the multiplication of two samples of the integration of white noise W at times U and V. Taking the expectation inside the integral onto the white noise gives its autocorrelation, which is a Dirac function. Now the variance is the autocorrelation for zero lag, that is for U equals to V, when the Dirac function integrates to unity. So the variance of the integral of white noise and the Wiener process increases in proportion to the elapsed time t. Big W here is known as the diffusion of the process, but remembering again that this result applies to the ensemble rather than to any one particular sample. Taking the limit of an infinitesimal time interval gives this result which in matrix form is the one needed for state space analysis. So in summary, the Wiener process matches up with the integration of white noise on the basis of its accumulation of independent stationary increments, its Gaussian distribution, and its mean and variance, even though white noise can't, strictly speaking, be integrated. And it's absolutely convenient to operate with the Wiener process with this incremental variance rather than the less well-behaved white noise when its infinities would otherwise produce misleading results. Now let's continue with the state-space approach. 
It's more general than transfer function methods, for example, in allowing for time-varying parameters and initial condition responses, but LTI, linear time-invariant systems, stationary statistics, and zero-mean assumptions where appropriate make things a bit easier to handle. We'll look at solutions for the mean and covariance function, and then go on to the covariance matrix and the variance equation, finally tacking on the correlation function to complete the picture. Of most interest, as a means of finding out how a system responds to noise, though, is the variance equation, which solves to give the covariance matrix of system signal strengths. The diagram shows a standard state space model of a practical system with a finite bandwidth. It has both a zero mean noise input and a separate one for any offsets or other deterministic signals. The model solution comprises the natural response with the state transition matrix or SDM phi, which maps the system state from the initial time t0 to the current time t, and the force response convolution integrals driven by the white noise input w and the deterministic input u. It is, however, the zero mean noise input which is of particular interest here. But there's a snag owing to the difficulty with the integration and corresponding differentiation of white noise. A workaround used to develop the system covariance is to multiply the system equation throughout by dt to obtain the differential form in terms of the Wiener process beta, as white noise is d beta by dt. So the solution now involves the Wiener function rather than white noise. Looking at the mean first, as it's nearly Christmas, here it is easiest to use the standard form of the state space solution, leaving the deterministic bit in just to take care of offsets. Taking the expected value, and then sliding the right-hand side expectations past the deterministic bits onto the random signals x and w, gives this. Now, labeling the mean values as mx, and knocking out the second term as the input is zero mean white noise, leaves this. A deterministic equation with just a natural response from the initial mean value of the system state, along with a driven response from any offset, the mean value being unchanged by the noise input. And for linear, non-time varying systems with constant parameters, the SDM simplifies a bit to phi of t and can be found using the matrix exponential form as shown here, or without the extra terms if there's no offset. Unfortunately, in general, both the state transition matrix and the convolution integral can be hard to solve analytically. So it's often easier in practice to numerically simulate the original system equation, written in terms of the mean value of the system initial conditions and the mean input noise signal as a deterministic input, as illustrated here for the LTI case. A numerical integration routine such as MATLAB's ODE45, shown later, being required for the more general time varying case. But in the example used in the first half of the clip of a simple first order low pass filter, it is easy to find the STM. The task is to find the changing mean value of the initially zero output in response to an input noise signal with a DC offset of 1 volt. Firstly, the transfer function must be recast as a state space model, here by cross multiplying to get the differential equation form and then substituting phase variable x for y in the system equation and taking the 1 volt offset as a separate deterministic input, sharing the same input vector. The state transition matrix is then found from the matrix exponential, where the system matrix A is just minus 1. Substituting this back into the complete solution, the unforced response is 0, the noise input contributes nothing to the mean value, and the offset driven component gives a charging exponential result. Verified here by the simulation. Moving on from the mean to the covariance, where we can drop offsets and deterministic inputs to concentrate on noise strength, is built from the general covariance function by plugging in the solution to the differential form state equation for x at time s from a starting time t, 
and with the previous result for the expected value of the system response to zero mean white noise, giving this lot. It's possible to slim the thing down because of the expectation surrounding everything. Bits containing the system state, x at the initial time t, aren't correlated with the integral, which is concerned with how the system is driven from that initial state by the as yet unknown noise input. So the integral term can be scrubbed from the square bracket to leave this. Now the SDM can be factored out. And pushing the transpose through the individual terms then leaves this which exposes the expectation of the two square bracket terms as a covariance matrix for zero time lag RTT. The overall result shows that the covariance of the output between any two times S and T is simply the initial time covariance matrix RTT attacked by the transpose of the STM. Finally, using the matrix symmetry trick mentioned in part A, the two times can be swapped around to give the covariance function in terms of the later time s relative to the initial time t. And this result shows that the STM transforms the initial time covariance matrix of signal variances into the covariance function for any time lag. The covariance matrix is important and labelled p here as a function of only one time instant t in comparison to the more general covariance function rst. For LTI systems with stationary statistics, correlation, like the STM, only depends on the time shift, tor, from the initial time value, P0. Returning to the previous example, but now looking for the covariance function of the output, which with a zero mean input matches the correlation function, it's obtained from the STM of e to the minus tor, working now with time lag, being substituted into the formula, where we can assume steady-state conditions and hence stationary statistics, in which case the covariance is a function of time lag tor only, and where the negative time delay portion is again found from the transpose of the STM, to give this result, showing how the correlation between any two sample times decreases exponentially from the zero lag variance. Having found the general covariance function R of the system state, the next step is to find the covariance matrix P of state variances and cross variances. This is a bit of a trek, but it follows the same pattern of substituting the state space solutions into the covariance function and then beating it around until something computable shows up. Starting as before from the expectation, but with both brackets now at time t, and with the solution now for time t relative to an initial reference time t0, concentrating on the second bracket, the solution can, as before, be plugged in for x of t, along with the previous result for the mean value, to give this. The two terms in phi and xt0 can be pushed together, enabling us to factor out the STM as before. Then taking the transposes into the second bracket gives this. We can multiply the first xt expected xt bracket through while identifying and pulling out the first chunk as a covariance r between times t and t0. Now there's still the xt term here, so the solution for xt can again be plugged in along with the mean. Still a bit of a mess. But as for the previous derivation for RST, we can eliminate the cross-multiplied xt0 terms and the d-beta integral term, as the noise drive for t greater than t0 is uncorrelated with the value of x at time t0. The tricky bit, however, is that the multiplication of the two integrals must be kept in. So it comes down to this. Now it's OK here to shove the integrals together, and during the process apply the transposes to the individual terms in the second bracket, switching around their order, and sliding in the expectations at the same time to get this result. An improvement. This is the point at which the reason for starting with the differential form of the state equations with the Wiener process instead of white noise becomes important, as this integral term would otherwise be lost in the bad behaviour of white noise. Using the previous result for the variance of the Wiener process then loses one integral to give this. 
And finally, the initial covariance can be replaced using the previous result for the development of the covariance function from the initial time covariance matrix. All that remains is to relabel RTT and RT0, T0 by PT and PT0. And now this, at rather long last, is a solution for the covariance matrix at time t in terms of both the initial condition response from the initial time covariance matrix PT0 and the driven response from the white noise input of strength big W. For simple systems, like our first order low pass filter example, we can find the state transition matrix and solve this equation, showing an exponentially increasing output variance up to a steady state value of 0 0.5 with a time constant of half a second. Unfortunately, for most practical systems, it's usually pretty hard to solve this thing either analytically or numerically. So the plan is to differentiate the solution to get the variance equation a first-order equation in the rate of change of covariance that can be solved by numerical integration. The differentiation is attacked in two parts. The first bit can be done using the three-way multiplication rule, simplified a bit by the derivative of r t0 t0 being zero as it's a fixed initial condition, and also complicated a bit using the property of the STM of its derivative amounting to a multiplication by the system matrix A giving this result. Moving on to differentiating the integral part, things get a bit trickier. Leibniz's rule is used here, with these substitutions for the limits and their derivatives, resulting in this, the third term being zero as a1 is a constant. Hmm, well we've started so let's hack on. The STM here from t to t is simply the identity matrix for nothing changing. There's still a derivative with respect to time to take inside the integral, which acts on the phi terms. And using the product rule, along with the derivative of phi as a times phi, gives this. And putting it all together gives this lot. Yuck. But now we can use the solution we started off with for the covariance matrix P to get this overall result by substituting it directly with A for the yellow bits and with A transpose for the orange bits, while the A matrices can be slid out of the integrals as they're not functions of lambda. Well, it was a long haul, but the end result's significant. It's the infamous variance equation, and the good news is that it's possible to integrate this numerically from a known initial condition to give the solution for the output variance of a dynamic system with system matrix A and input matrix F driven by white noise of strength big W. The response will be non-stationary, but if the system's stable, it'll eventually settle down to a constant noise variance where the derivative term is zero. For a linear time invariant system, the even better news is that this leaves a much easier to solve algebraic equation. Returning to our filter example to firstly find the steady state covariance matrix, which here reduces to finding the scalar value of the steady state output variance. Plugging the system input and noise strength into the algebraic equation and solving gives a value of 0 0.5 for the variance. This is also the zero lag value of the general covariance function found earlier. And in this zero mean case, covariance is equivalent to the correlation function which is incidentally that of a classic Markov process, with sample values more than 3 to 5 seconds apart being uncorrelated with each other. The result is confirmed by this simulation output using the MATLAB X-Core cross-correlation routine, run with a sample time of 0.01 seconds on a 2 second time grid. And this slide shows the solution of the algebraic variance equation using the MATLAB care function for continuous time algebraic Riccati equations which solves as p equals 0 0.5 when these substitutions from our example are entered. Finally, this slide shows the use of the ODE45 numerical integration routine to solve the variance equation for the full time varying case. The routine handles all the time steps, convergence and so on involved in numerical integration with the aid of calls to the function to be integrated at every time step. Here, this is the Riccati function, which has to provide the slope of the solution back to the ODE45. 
The only snag here is that the ODE45 routine interacts using a column vector format, so the Emery Carty function takes in column values and then reshapes them into the system matrices to work out the derivative output on the dxdt line, and then pushes the result back to the ODE45 as a column. The curly at handle translates from the system matrices used by the Emery Carty function to the TNX vectors used by the ODE45. The result shows the output variance gradually increasing from 0 to a steady state value of 0 0.5. And finally, this is one sample simulation result for this example. This second, more complex example is taken directly from the book by John Borry. It uses a standard quarter car model of vehicle suspension to investigate the effects of both deterministic step and stochastic roughness changes to the road surface. The model is derived here from a generalized element equivalent circuit with components hung between the displacement nodes for the motions of the road, wheel and car body. Equating forces at the nodes and plugging in the component relationships for mass, spring and damping gives the model in differential equation form. These equations can be rearranged in terms of the highest order derivative terms and the wheel and body motions used as phase variable substitutions to convert the two second order equations into four first order ones of the required state space form. These are the matrix equations and here after substituting appropriate component values. This slide shows the MATLAB instructions to enter the system and run the simulation in Simulink. These are the results for the deterministic input case of the car hitting a sudden change in road height of 5 cm. This slide shows what happens when the vehicle hits a rough patch of road. The numerical solution of the variance equation shows an increasing output noise variance rising to a steady state value for both the car body and the wheel. The correlation function is the last piece to consider here for completeness. Its definition is simpler than for covariance in that it doesn't account for the mean values of the system or input signals. Differentiating gives this result into which we can substitute the system equation, for convenience here using the standard rather than the differential version to give the final result. Substituting the correlation back into the right hand side along with the mean values and a bit of fiddling gives this result. The first two terms are obtained directly. The third term is the fiddle. It accounts for the effect of the input and matches the result obtained above for the convolution function, requiring the workaround for the integration of white noise, which we achieved using the Wiener process. The remaining terms account for the cross-correlation of the input and the system state. Although the noise is uncorrelated, any mean values will affect the output correlation function. For example, an input signal sitting on a 2 volt level driving a state signal with a 5 volt mean value will contribute to 10 volt squared offset to their correlation. So the variance equation, rewritten in terms of correlations rather than covariances, looked like this. Though it may be easier to stick with covariance and consider the means independently. In summary, this part of the sequence on stochastic processes introduces at a rather a frantic pace both transfer function and state space approaches to the analysis of dynamic systems driven by white noise. These are useful both for finding out how systems like vehicles or circuits respond to noisy inputs and for developing filtering and control applications to mitigate the effects of noise. Thank you.